Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, we've got a great privilege here today to talk to Derek Ufton, who celebrates a birthday later on this month. Uh, I'll let you look up to find out actually uh, how many years that is, but he's been a legend of Kent for many years. Uh, and Sam Billings, uh, uh, Kent captain. But we're going to talk to Derek a little bit about how he started, um, the fact that he had a full career in football with Charlton and with Kent. But I think we're going to really concentrate later on in terms of Kent's, uh, of Derek's reflections on Kent, the fact that he was part of the wicket-keeping family, uh, and then some reflections on those that he played with uh, and, and maybe against too. Uh, and uh, let's, let's just in, in, enjoy and see where we get to. But Derek, thank you very much for joining us and making the time. I think the first question really is, you know, how was it that you, in 1940, I think it was 1949, played both football and cricket for uh, Charlton and, and, and for Kent and, and actually had a, a full career, um, you know, in, in both cricket and, and football. But I'm told cricket was your greatest love. Is that correct? Yes, very much so, actually. Um, ever since I can remember, I just wanted to play cricket. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, my formative years would have been just after the body line. 32, 33, wow. and so gradually you you pick up things and you, you learn more about uh, what you're interested in in life, and I just learnt more about cricket every day, and I was as happy as a sandboy, really, um, <laughs> and I just pleaded with my parents every opportunity we got to go and watch a county game. It took me quite a long time, but we went on holiday with an aunt, to Western Supermare yeah. and Somerset were playing Gloucestershire I think it was at Clarence Park and there was a fellow called Arthur Wellard playing who was an ex-Kent player who obviously wasn't good enough at the time came from Bexley just down the road from me. Yeah. so I managed to get there and as things happen in life he got naught and <laughs> broke my heart <laughs> <laughs> but it's a vivid recollection uh, and my next game was Gravesend. Kent were playing, and my mum took me all the way. We lived in Crayford, which is dark. Yeah, yeah. Bit of a drag to Gravesend, really. And Godfrey's debut, I think, uh, he uh, caught a, a one-handed catch down the leg side. And I said to my mum, cool, that was pretty good, that. I wouldn't mind doing things like that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, And so it went on. But... Uh, I couldn't find a cricket team. The school I went to, we we moved, moved from. My dad lived in a factory house, yeah. BCD Vickers, Crayford and Dark. They've still got a football team, and nobody knows what BCD stands for. <laughs> Vickers, Crayford and Dark, and he mm -hmm. worked in the factory. But the sports ground was the other end of Crayford, yeah. and all the uh, factory houses were quite a long way away. And we lived in one of the factory houses and they weren't very happy. So we moved up to Barnhurst, which was where the VCD sports ground was. Yeah. And from there on in, it was 24 hours a day on grass as much as <laughs> I could manage. Fantastic. And, um, but I couldn't find a team to play for. Yeah. And, and somebody said, well, the choir's got a team, try the choir. St. Polina's Choir. Uh, and I, I did, I found the choir master and he said, yeah, we've got a cricket team. I run it. Would you like to play? I said, I'd love to play. I was a bit younger than the others. And he said, well, I turn up on Tuesday and we've got a game on Thursday. So I turned up on Tuesday and he said, oh, yes, you can play in the team on Thursday. I did travel to a place called Longfield, the other side of Dark. No, got there. Right next and to I was over the moon. The only problem was, he said, because you're in the cricket team, you've got to be in the choir. So turn up <laughs> on Saturday at 10.30. <laughs> and at 12.30, he said, could we have a word? So I said, yes. He said, um, you're, you're, you're not quite in tune with the others. <laughs> I'm not sure we can carry you. Anyway, the poor guy had to carry me. I was toned it completely useless. <laughs> <laughs> but I played in this game, that was my first team. And then that, I was over the moon. Unfortunately, the school I went to was just educationally 
wanted it all to be grammar school. You and went to Dartford, didn't, didn't you? didn't want to play other teams lower in standing than his school. Right. So uh, I didn't find another team until I luckily passed the scholarship and went to Dartford Grammar School. We yeah. had quite a good side. And in 1944, we got in the final of the Dartford Stay at Home 20 over competition and played Dartford Cricket Club. <laughs> and Dartford Cricket Club invited me to play for them. Fantastic. Uh, which was lovely. And yeah. I scored a few runs and things. And, and they really did well, these guys at Dartford. Pushed and pushed. And on August Bank Holiday Monday, 1945, Kent played the rest at Canterbury. And yeah. somebody dropped, Fred Foy, dropped out on the Saturday nights. And I got this phone call about six o'clock Sunday morning. Could I get to Canterbury? Could I? So I played for Kent versus the rest at Canterbury in August Bank Holiday 1945. Les Ames, my hero, played. Yeah. Hopper Levitt played. Uh, <laughs> Sunnock played and a few others. And, and I'm over the moon. Didn't play very well. Rained most of the day. But I'd played and I'd played with them and everything. And so when the trials came next May, uh, I was desperate to get them and get on the staff because I thought they know who I am. I've got a good chance. Turned up for the staff and there were about 40 chaps here. On a Monday morning, I come down the night before I said to my dad, um, I'll, I'll just fill you in so you know my history, is my mum got killed by a flying bomb in really? 1944 yeah. in July. Uh -huh. And so there was only my dad and I. Mm. So uh, he had a job to get to. He worked in the factory and mm. so on and so forth. So I had to do quite a bit of... Anyway, I thought, well, I've got to get there early to the trial. So I came down. It was a Monday. I came down on a Sunday night after dark for the play cricket, called a train, got to Canterbury about nine o'clock. The only hotel I could find was the big one in the main <laughs> street. It was now the county. Mm. And uh, I stood outside for an hour and got the courage to go in. And the guy came <laughs> out and closed all the doors. And I said, excuse me, I'm looking for somewhere to stay. <laughs> he said, you better come in here. So I was the first at the ground the next day. Yeah. Ray Dovey was standing there with a cardboard with all the names. He had about 40 names there. So he put us all in groups and everything. And this guy ran up and bowled a quick one. Not to me, to others, and not to stump out. And he did it the next week with Fred Ridgway, who was in the Fred. room yeah. at Deal and had come for a trial. After half an hour, they wrote his name down and said, You can go home, turn up tomorrow, you're on the staff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's was the way it was done then, wasn't there it? There was another fellow called John Aitchison who played for yeah. Bexley Heath. And we all knew about him. He was about 16, if that. He was younger than me. And, and uh, he had the most beautiful left arm action you'd ever seen. Mm. The run-up was a dream. His action, he was quite tall and mm. he was high and he spun it. And, and he was such a good bowler. After half an hour, they'd sign him as well. So those oh, two yeah. were, were set. Yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm there, I'm having a bat, I'm not doing very well. He gets to four o'clock in the afternoon, well, half past three in the afternoon, and everybody's gone home except me. So Ray Dovey said, what are you doing? So I said, well, nobody's spoken to me. He said, what are you <laughs> spoken to? I, said, I thought somebody would say something. You know? yeah. So anyway, he said, well, I'm, I'm going home, I'll leave you to it. So he left me there. And I'm the only one left. There's nobody about at all. I've got my kit to pack, and them, which I did, put it in the bag. And I thought, well, there's nobody left. What am I going to do? Yeah. And I thought, I'll have one last walk around the ground just to say I really know the ground. And I walked around the ground. I got up to uh, the offices uh, area and Gita La Huff, who was the secretary, chief executive at that time, Mm. who'd got a bad crippling disease and walked on crutches. And he said, hey, you, hey, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> so I said, I've been for the trial, sir. And he said, oh, have you? why are you still here? 
everybody's gone home. I said, well, yes, but I thought people would say, thank you for coming, goodbye. Yeah. He said, no, 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 no we, we don't want you, get, get off home. And I, I thought, oh, and I walked down, I got my cricket bag, and he suddenly said, come back here, come back here. So I went back and he said, uh, I've been thinking about it, and this is how it was in those days, completely. He said, um, Mr. Levitt is uh, thinking about retiring. He doesn't really want to keep wicket anymore. And Ames, well, he's just packing up. He's got a bad back, he said. Mm. So we've only got Evans on the start. And Mr. Levitt really refuses to play anymore. He said, so can you keep wicket? Well, luckily enough, I'd kept wicket a couple of times in school games. So I said, yes, I've kept wicket. So he <laughs> said, well, you, you can come down here. When are you going in the army? I said, August probably. He said, well, you, you can stay here till you get in the army, he said. And uh, but we'll never retain you. We'll never have you back. He said, I saw you out there. He said, you won't be good enough for us. He said, but you can come and fill in till August. I was over the moon. You know? <laughs> it was so... Um, Turn Amazing up, story, it? Derek. Sorry? So, so I'm, 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 well, I'm, I'm fascinated at the insight into the whole trial process. I think maybe we've moved on a little bit since then now in terms of the amount of, <laughs> yes. the amount of due no, diligence not a lot, we though. do. They all still turn up, don't they? Right. <laughs> uh, we do still. We, we, you, you're right. You're right. But the whole development programme. Okay, so, so um, you hadn't really kept wicket before, but you volunteered and you obviously did that. You went away in the army, then you came back in 1949 um, and Godfrey by that stage was, I mean, he was started to play for England as well, hadn't he? Oh, so, well, Godfrey, Godfrey was in the team in 46. Yeah. And if I may tell you a story about embarrassing you too much. Right. <laughs> I, I joined the start 46, as I just said. I went in the army and all. So I virtually missed 47 and 48. Yeah. Although I was stationed at Buller Barracks at Aldershot where Godfrey had been and all yeah. they did was play cricket and they left me plenty of time. So I played quite a lot of the second eleven cricket. But okay. in that time, a young chap called Downton kept yeah. with for Kent. Yeah. 17 or 18 he was. And they yeah. said, oh, we've got a really good wicketkeeper here. Um, <laughs> and they offered your dad terms. Yeah. So yeah. he luckily he refused them because if he had accepted them, I probably wouldn't have had a career in Kent. <laughs> Every day I think about your dad <laughs> and he what was, he did uh, for me. Yeah, I've spoken to him a lot about it. You know, obviously he's passed away now, sadly, but uh, he played eight games. I think in forty-eight and nine, or forty-nine and fifty, or not. I don't know. I think he Tell me, broke four. a finger keeping wicket against Yorkshire. But yeah. you're right, he, he, he was training to be an architect at the time. And whilst he never completed that, he worked for Marley Tiles for a long time. Um, you know, he, he still remembers well those Kent days. And of course, he then spent, you know, the next 30 years playing a lot of club cricket. Uh, and uh, well, I had the, the honour of captaining the, the club cricket conference against the Australians in 63. So he played a lot of cricket. And, and obviously, you would have played quite a lot against him uh, at Darford yeah. too. Well, but still... Yeah. I mean, you, funny you, enough, we didn't beat up that often because he played for the Vine, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. My club was Dartford, and yeah. they, they never had a fixture together, I expect. Oh, really? But really? Well, in those days, it was uh, Blackheath, Bromley, Beckenham, the yeah. Vine, yeah. Uh, Tunbridge Wells. They wouldn't play against Dartford, basically. Really? <laughs> it was no, well, no keeper. <laughs> it was a little bit of amateur and professional. Yeah, I can imagine. So, so um, anyway, you you join the staff. Tell me about Godfrey, because he's got this reputation of being an absolutely electric wicketkeeper at times, but at other times he wasn't quite as switched on. Was, was that well, a fair? It, it was just Godfrey, really. Um, yeah. I mean, we're all different in life, aren't we? And uh, yeah. Godfrey, Godfrey was different in so many ways. But if we just stick to wicket keeping, he yeah. was above the rest. He he yeah. stood. I, I mean, if you look at ninety nine percent of us, yeah. uh, I don't know much about Sam because he's very mobile as well. But God, Godfrey was mobile, mm -hmm. and so he'd take up a position, but he'd be on his toes, and he'd be moving, and he all he wanted to do was stand up, which most of us really wanted to do in those days. Yeah. 
uh, as well, I probably in these days, you know, allowed to do it. But but Godfrey was mesmerizing, really. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And for the rest of us, keeping with it. And so, because I wanted to improve, I would try and do it the way Godfrey did it. Yeah. But you can't. You can only do it your way, really. You, of course, you know, yes. The same thing. Um, so, so Godfrey, I, I always, one day I, I got on very well with him. He was, he was mm-hmm. helpful and chatted and things like that. Um, but he, he could be, he could be very annoying with, there wasn't much television in those days. Right. And I, I got in for my batting occasion. Well, quite in my first yeah. two seasons, quite a bit. And we're playing somebody at Canterbury on the August bank holiday, Saturday, first day, go yeah. out in the field. I'm fielding at short leg with some of the two of us there. Yeah. And and Godfrey was terrible. I mean, <laughs> terrible was a good word. You know? <laughs> he was putting the ball down right, left and centre. And he got to about 20 past 12 and he said to me, um, somebody said this, we're on television sometime. He knew. We were. <laughs> he said, what time are we on television? I said, we've got half an hour, 12.30 till 1. 12.30, what, what's the time? Well, I better get myself together. He took two of the best catches you'd ever seen in your life. <laughs> Quite remarkable. And kept like a dream. And then from one o'clock till half past before we go into lunch, he goes to sleep again. So Godfrey really rose to the big occasion. So when he played for England, yeah. he was marvellous. This was as high as he could get. And yeah. he was on top of his form. But it, coming back to Kent was a little bit like Playing for your club side and then playing for your Sunday school team on yeah. the Sunday, you can't, you just can't get yourself yeah. with the same feeling. Yeah. And it wasn't yeah. really Godfrey's fault, it was just the way he was. Yeah. And I used yeah. to say to him, Come on, Godfrey, pull yourself together. But he couldn't really, unless there was a reason to do it. Yeah. I'll give you an example. I think it was 19, 1951, a fella called Tom Crawford was captain of the second 11. Yeah. Should have been captain of the first team. He was a good cricket brain. He knew what was going on. Instead of which we finished up with Bill Rooks by Murray Wood. Didn't know whether it had rained in the last three days or not. Sort of. So Tom Crawford said to Godfrey, I'll give you a pound for every pound you get in county cricket this year. Over a thousand pounds, over a thousand, over a thousand runs. Then I'll double it. Okay. And Godfrey was sort of was getting 350, 400 runs a season. Probably got a thousand. <laughs> Pulled the captain into going in number three every game, and, and piled himself up a thousand quid. You know, <laughs> he, he could do that. He could turn it around. Any any anything which was a bit. Un- he was a great fives player and a great rackets player. Was he? Anything yeah. where he was quick on his feet. Yeah. Or even quick in his brain. Yeah. And you know, unbelievably, I don't know the story, but I left, uh, as we all do. Godfrey had been gone six or seven years, probably. Yeah. And I finished up with, with Mecca Entertainment, Eric Morley. I worked for him. Fabulous. How I got the job, I don't know. Yes. Looked after Miss World, the whole lot. <laughs> and Godfrey <laughs> found out that I was working. Or running the sportsman club in Scotland Court Road yeah. for Mecca. So Godfrey, he was turning up three, four nights a week and he'd chat people into sort of staking him for a hundred quid and he'd put ten towards it and they'd share the winning. You know? <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. I want to bring, I just want to bring Sam in um, because uh, he's listening away, but you know, he, Talk then about wicket keepers. Everybody used to stand up. That was the sort of the the, the, the test of a wicket keeper. You know, we read about Godfrey keeping wicket to Alec Beds uh, standing up to the wicket and so on. But Sam, did, did, do you think that's gone out of the game a little bit now? Certainly, it changed in Notty's area. But well, it, how, it, how do you enjoy standing up to the uh, to the um, yeah. to the quicker bowlers? That kind of thing. It, it had already gone out of the game, funnily yeah, enough, yeah. after the war. They, they yeah. were just interested in winning, well, whenever, winning games anyway. Yeah. So yeah. they felt that if you stood up, you yeah. missed a few chances you'd take building, standing back as an extra yeah. slip in a way. Yeah. That's yeah. all you're doing. 
but you as a wiki keeper you you want to develop your art you want to get better at it and you can see situations where you'd be much better standing up and yeah. i mean i'm not yeah. saying that we all know more about bowling than bowlers but you can tell the way bats we do we do Derek. <laughs> 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 I, I think you're spot on with um it, it definitely has gone out of the game um compared to uh, days gone by i think you look simply at the stats of how many stumpings wicket keepers get nowadays i mean it, it is nowhere near um the keepers of the past so um i, I totally agree with you standing up to the wicket with pace bowlers is kind of that adrenaline rush um it's exciting and it's a really good challenge and actually i think the more we get challenged with all of those things actually your performance goes up i think uh, the more monotonous and and we can even say boring, let's say on a flat pitch, standing back to the wicket it is. Um, you can kind of, as you mentioned about Godfrey, you can lull yourself into a um, sense of security and false sense of security. And whereas up to the stumps, you just can't afford to do that really. Um, no. No, I mean, well, Darren, I... Darren Stevens is the perfect example. The modern yeah. example for us is that um, I... I always badger him. I'm always in his ear to get up to the stumps because I really enjoy it. I know that I might get a half a chance here or there. Um, and, and sometimes he doesn't necessarily like that. So it's, again, that just, just that relationship with the bowler. Um, but certainly more and more people are now using their feet with 2020 and stuff like that. So I think, in a way, it might come back into the game a little bit. Uh, well, some, some, somebody I'm, like I'm, you... you know, I, I mean, we don't know each other, so I can't, I can't pay you too many compliments. It was <laughs> <laughs> but but you, you, you have brought a zest back into Kent cricket. You're, you're there, you're lively, you're, you're on your toes, you're, you're playing the game. But, but you have to remember that when they changed it from three-day cricket to four-day cricket, they took a lot of entertainment value out of the game because three-day matches, nine, ten, and Jack used to come in and try and hit as many fours in the sixes as they could in the shortest time as possible. Now, before it's four-day cricket, they all think they can bat right down to <laughs> number 11. So everybody's coming in. And there's no variety for the spectator. And you, we've lost a lot of support of cricket because of changing that, people don't understand the entertainment they took away from the game by reducing it to a three, uh, or reducing, in my idea, to four days instead of two three day games a week. Which for, yeah. it, I mean, it's a fallacy to say Kent got big gates and we were packed out every Saturday. You could only get 250 in at Gravesend, so you got a full house at Gravesend. <laughs> You know, it doesn't quite compare. And most of our grounds were like that. Lovely places to play, but you couldn't yeah. get that many people in. So to say, oh, yeah. we were packed last Saturday, didn't get anybody on a Monday or Tuesday. We played <laughs> North Ants at Rushton once, and the, there was one guy, the same guy, on the Monday and Tuesday with his dog, and he was the only one there. Good <laughs> 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 to come in. <laughs> can, I just, one man and his dog. can I just mention one thing that really um, resonated when um, you were speaking earlier, Derek, was uh, you said um, you watched Godfrey Evans and you, and you wanted to do what Godfrey did, but you said you, you learnt later on in your career that you had to do it your way. I think that's really important um, for anyone, uh, obviously myself listening to that, but uh, certainly young players uh, coming through. I think I, I fell into that trap of looking at everyone else and wanting to learn from all these great players that I was around um, probably too much and have kind of on the back of that gone back to taking in information and learning off other great players, of course, and you never stop learning but really understanding what I do and what I do well. Um, and I, I just thought that was a really, really key point and really good point, good piece of advice um, that you said then. Um, well, I, I found out, just to butt in a little moment, 
no. When when I I got in the side in forty nine, the first game I played was at uh, at the moat at Maidstone, and Les Ames captain Kent, and Tom Dollery captain Warwickshire, and it was the first match when two professional captains had played against each other okay. in county cricket. So that was nineteen forty nine. So that was a little bit of an, a different type of game because uh, some of the stories I can tell you about captains and uh, how they got jobs. and I mean, Les Ames was appointed captain of Kent one winter in October and in February they called him in and said, Les, when are you turning amateur? So he said, what do you mean? So they said, well, you've accepted the captaincy. You can't be a professional and captain. And Les said, well... <laughs> I've got to earn money. I can't live on nothing. <laughs> oh, well, you've got a hotel and you've got a half of the shop. You'll be all right. And you get your name, initials in front of your name. You know, L.E.G. Ames. Instead of Ames, <laughs> there So Les wouldn't have any of it. So he never Captain Kent. But he'd actually been appointed to Kent <laughs> Captain. You know. Thankfully, Paul took that condition out of my contract. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> but but the other thing is that wicket keeping is, is not only an art; it it is a a job that's got to be done correctly every moment of the day. Mm. I mean, people use naughty, for example, is. His first year was my last year, so we mm -hmm. quite, came quite friendly. And I mm -hmm. used to say to him, "Well, Godfrey, tell me, he said, well, Godfrey never spoken to me, you know, blah blah blah." He said, mm -hmm. "Well, that's not quite true. He did tell me two things. He said, make sure I catch everybody cleanly, every ball cleanly. He said, and make sure I'm talking to the batsman when the bowler's bowling." <laughs> <laughs> that's all Godfrey. <laughs> Godfrey sounds like a big character. <laughs> he was a um, big character. But, but, but keeping yeah. wicket, not only as an art, you've got to do it every ball you've got to take cleanly because every ball may be an opportunity to get somebody out. So every ball you've got to be full of concentration and you don't want to give overthrows away. You, you know, some of the boys I see at Canterbury now, they, they couldn't care less about uh, where the ball's coming from, you know, we've got back up here, they're back up there, but it's your job really to take every ball, yeah. you know, and then you've got to keep that, and you get, because of you get better, and they they made the excuse of sending me back to Kent Cricket Secondary, and it's probably because I wasn't good enough, they didn't want to tell me, but they said, you go back and get some wicket keeping practice, because if you play in the first team as a batter, you won't get a weaker keeper back. And basically, they were quite right. Every time you keep wicket, you get a bit better. But you've got to keep wicket to the same bowlers. It's no good keeping wicket to the best bowlers in the, in the world for a week and then send back to the second team playing mm. with guys who can't bowl straight. Sort of thing, you know, it doesn't help. Does it? And then Paul would feel but, the same way, I'm sure. When you're keeping wicket, you're a wicket keeper. Yeah, but you know your point about the way Godfrey was made, I think, is so unusual because you can make yourself look such a fool if you don't concentrate with the keeping. There's nowhere to hide, really. So to have that kind of mentality where you can, you know, you have that switch where you can turn it on, but you don't have to. I think is very rare. Most wicket keepers, I think, are mini perfectionists in a way. And yeah. that point about you know every ball's coming through to you. You know, I remember talking to Notty because, you know, in some ways we sort of overlapped. Well, Notty and I obviously overlapped. You were there at the beginning, Derek. I was there, and not quite at the end, but towards his end, and, and picking up things. And, and, and I know Notty had an ambition to go out and not drop a ball all day, you know, whether it was from the bowler, whether it was a field or anything like that. And he would sort of count down... You know, look, look at every half hour, how many balls have I dropped? And he, re he told me he reckoned he had three days uh, where he hadn't dropped a ball at all. Uh, and that just seemed like a great sort of ambition to, to, to have. If you can take that onto the field, I'm going to get through the whole day without dropping a ball, whatever it is, bad throws and so on. And it's that kind of perfectionism, which uh, I think most wiki keepers have. So Godfrey was without doubt, you know, the, the sort of the, the exception to the rule, it seems to me. 
Yeah. I think we should finish shortly, but I want to ask you about keeping working to Doug Wright, because obviously he was a Kent legend, um, and it, you know, we, well, leg spinners, we've not produced many leg spinners over the years, but how did you find keeping to Doug? You must have done it a little bit. Well, I, I was very lucky in as much as I did get in uh, to the side when Doug was still at his peak. Not for yeah. long, but he was still a yeah. great, great bowler. And yeah. of course, just watching Doug run up was, was an <laughs> entertainment in itself. Well, they you, said, yeah. you, you could get mesmerised by it. <laughs> God, how does he do that hop, step and a jump and still bowl? <laughs> <laughs> but he had he, he had a quick ball well he was a fast bowler without any okay. doubt at all he was yeah. faster or as fast as the fastest bowler mm. everybody talks about typhoon uh, uh, and everything Doug Wright's quick ball was as quick as any he ever bowled unbelievably really? quick yeah. Yeah. so I said to him one day excuse me Doug uh, you know but I'm, I'm in the side and uh, I don't know when you're going to bowl your fastball. You didn't, you, you didn't mind so much about the Googles because I'll come, i come to that if I may. But the quick mm. ball was four buys if you didn't <laughs> get it quite right because it was. Yeah. So quick. But luckily, I'd sort of always watching for it, so I'd managed to get there most of the time, not all. Of them. Yeah. So I said to him one day, "Excuse me, Doug, but I think, I think you ought to tell me." What, the signal you give to Godfrey for your fast ball, couldn't you? They said. So I said, well, why is that? He said, well, it's bad enough Godfrey knowing. He said, I'm frightened other people to find out. He said, uh, and I don't want people to know because it was so blinking green. You know, he never ever told me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, I think now's a good time to have a have a pause because I can see that we've got a few more things to talk about maybe in the next session. Because county caps, I think you were part of the, of, of, of the numbered county caps. And we were one of the first counties, I think, to do that. We haven't talked about your football. Uh, and we haven't talked about Notty. And we haven't talked about Les Ames much. So I think if you're OK, uh, Derek, we'll bring this session to a close. But we might reconvene in a day or two and carry on talking. Would that be all right? Yeah, pleasure. Yeah. It's brilliant been, I know so, I'm, so I'm enjoying it I hope you are yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> love it absolutely love it I'm very conscious that Sam has to go out training soon or go and, he does he does yoga and things like that you see so we've got to look <laughs> after him <laughs> right. Derek thank you very much for your time we will uh, have another conversation with Derek Upton uh, in the next few days but uh, for the moment thank you very much and Sam thanks very much for joining no problem at we'll all. Speak thank soon. you very much Derek lovely nice to good see stuff. you good stuff Good